is the update for the 2005 game of the year, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. We're gonna do a, we did a whole lot of updates to this thing. It looks, it's amazing. One of the things we've done, we've taken Sam Fisher, we put him in all new elements. One of the things you're gonna see him deal with is he's, he's just dealing in broad daylight. He's fighting in broad daylight, he's unmasked. He's got all kinds of missions that have conflicting, uh, conflicting goals. So for instance, because we made him a double agent, we've asked Sam to infiltrate the US-based terrorist organization. Now, one of the first tasks he's given as he's trying to get himself in with this terrorist organization, the leader right here, Emil Dufresne of that terrorist organization, has offered him a choice. He wants him to execute this innocent hostage, this American hostage right here. Now, you as Sam are being tested. You will have a decision as the player to determine what you want to do here. Whatever decision you make will affect the outcome of the game. So, what would you do? Would you shoot him or not shoot him? Shoot him! Take him down. That's just take him down. Give him a clean shot. There, well. One shot and done. Now, that was a good move. Hey, sometimes you gotta take out one person to save a lot of others. Now, you've, you've done, you've gratiated yourself now to the terrorist organization because you've, you've done what he asked you to do. Now that he trusts you, he sends you on a mission that will take you to Western Russia. What you will do here, you will skydive onto a glacier. Now, one of the things in the past Splinter Cells, the cut, these things that we call cutscenes, you would have just watched him skydive onto the glacier and then the mission would have started but not in Center Cell Double Agent. No, now you, the player, will control the jump. So, you have complete control over this skydive. Now, you determine what you can do in the air, the camera angles. You'll determine where the chute gets pulled. If you do not pull the chute in time, that'll be the end of the mission. That'll be the end of you. So, again, another new cool feature of Splinter Cell Double Agent. So, instead of cutscenes, we're having what we call directed missions. So you'll notice here, coming up, you're gonna control this jump coming out of the plane. New graphics here, we got sky graphics. You're gonna be able to see the wind blowing against Sam's gear and face. Again, the mission here, you're gonna skydive onto this glacier and then try to hijack an oil rig. Sam's about to make this jump. Now keep in mind here, you guys are controlling this jump. So, you can, you control the camera angles. You control the flips and spins if you want to do that in the air. Right there, the camera angles right even with them. You can go underneath, you can go above. Again, you can spin, you can flip, you can do whatever you want. While you're having that fun, don't forget to lose sight of that altitude meter, because at some point you want to pull a parachute. There's the icon right there. That tells you you should try to pull the parachute. The parachute does not open, now what do you do? You gotta find the auxiliary chute. The auxiliary chute is found on the left hand. You wanna spin the controller around with your left thumb, find the highest vibration point. If you find that, that's when you'll stick it and get the auxiliary chute to pull. Nice move. Ariel's a good player. Again, if you can't execute that, you'll go compliant right on the glacier down at the end of that mission, you have to start over again. So there's no givens here. You gotta control everything. That's the thing with Switcher Cell Double Agent. You, the player, have a lot more control. So now that you've landed on this glacier to start your mission, it begins. Now again, you're going to notice you're in broad daylight. This is something that's never been seen in Splinter Cell before. You're in broad daylight with not a lot of coverage, not a lot of stealth opportunities here. So you're going to make your way along. Again, you've got very little crevices there you can use, but you got to use your environment. Some of the things you're going to notice here, the helicopter just brought in a couple of guys, a couple of guards you're going to have to contend with. Now there's, there's a couple of them right there. Now you have options, you can take them out, you got grenades, you got a, a machine gun. Now, you can also just sneak around them, it's up to you. Headshot, like that. Remember, you got one more guard to deal with. So again, you're gonna use your environment here, whatever you can use. You got a little wrench here in the glacier, use it. You got the last guard right there, checking out his buddy. That'd be a nice chance to take him out. No idea, nice. Okay, great, now we're gonna make our way over. Now this is coming up to one of the coolest new features of this game. As we're making our way along this, we got another guard there. Gotta get him, how we get around? Oh, he's coming up, oh, he came right into us. He's right there. Try to sneak around him. That, there we go, he took him out. 
guy was wild, he was hard to get rid of. Coming up on the coolest new feature of this game, you've seen him fight on land, you just saw him skydive through the air, now at the front, Sam's able to go underwater now. So as you can see, cool new underwater graphics, now he's swimming through the crease in this glacier. As he's swimming along, we don't stop there with the new features, not only can he swim, you'll see in the distance some translucent ice. Transducing ice means we can see through the ice. Now what that allows us to do, we're able to use the ice sheet now as a stealth opportunity. So now that we're stealth underneath the ice, we control camera angles. So you can see we can look up through the ice or look where we're swimming. Now a cool effect here we can do, we can bang on the ice. By banging on the ice, we call attention from one of the guards that's outside. Now we can keep our camera angle pointed up, find out, see where that guard is. There's the guard right there, we see him sneaking up. That guard has no idea we're laying weight underneath him. We'll wait for him to get right above us, then we'll get the claw, and we'll, we'll bang on the ice, bang, bang, punch through the ice, make a hole in the ice, pull the guard down through the ice, and execute him right there on the spot. Another cool new feature of this game, an ice sheet is a stealth to be able to break through the ice and kill him. The last minute I'll show you, this is a uh, mission to given to you again by the terrorist organization. They drop you into a civil war in Africa. The Civil War has nothing to do with your mission. It's just something that you've got to contend with while you're trying to get your mission accomplished. Now again, you're going to be in broad daylight. This has never been done before in the Splinter Cell series. Sam's going to be in broad daylight. And your mission here is given to you by the terrorist organization is to take out a rival terrorist leader. That, that's him right there. The rival terrorist leader is also a US devil agent like yourself, like Sam Fisher. So you will have a dilemma to make, a decision to make, once you get to him, you either take him out or not. Obviously that decision's gonna have consequences on the game. This game has branching storylines. Whatever decision you choose will have an effect on the outcome of the game. Now remember, this is a civil war happening here in this country. You don't, you're not with either side, but you've gotta get through this to get to your mission. You'll notice again, there's broad daylight here. Sam has his Ray-Bans on. Now you'll have another more dilemma coming up right here. You have some uh, innocent civilians, unarmed, being taken hostage by these guards. You can choose to take out these guards, or you can choose to go about your business. It's up to you. Um, we're going to, uh, well, okay, we're going to be heroes. So we'll take out one of the guards. Now we're going to make out our way here. Again, whatever decisions you make are going to have consequences on the game. This is, a, this is a complicated town. It's a hostile environment in this town. It's under a civil war. So you use whatever coverage you can. You can walk and run through abandoned buildings. Use whatever coverage you can. Again, pretty much everybody's armed because there is a civil war happening. You have rebel soldiers, you have government soldiers, you have unarmed civilians. You have lots of things to contend with. You have abandoned buildings, again, you can use any of this stuff. You have all kinds of routes and directions you can take in this game. As you're going along here, you can see Whoa, a bus just hit a landmine. This place is booby-trapped. Again, there's a war going on. So, you've got to be cognizant of all that stuff. Now, you can climb up this. It's probably a good move here. You can get a bird's eye view of this town, of the city. Find out the best way to get to the center of that town. And the, better, the way you want to get to the center of the town, the reason you want to get there is because there's a tower there. And in that tower, you'll have a rifle that can take out the man you're supposed to take out. Now, again, you control camera angles. You're looking down a main street here. This might be a, main, a nice street to get down, but no! The bus just hit a landmine. It goes flying down the street, taking out a couple pedestrians. You can use this zip line right above you. While everyone's distracted by that, use that to get through the town. You get down to the ground. That street looked like it was pretty busy. A lot of action happening. Let's stay away from that. We'll take it back out. This back alley, whoa, another explosion happening. This back alley's there, and I see a truck right there. That's a military truck. That might be a nice thing to either hijack or somehow get on so that you can get to the center of the city without having to do all this on foot. As you can see, going on foot, it's a dangerous mission. Well, you got a couple of guards right there. We got options. We can shoot them. We can throw a grenade. Grenade might not be a good idea, though, because it'll blow up the truck. So wait for this guard. A little bit of patience here. It looks like the guard's going to take off. So the guard takes off. We're going to make our way over to the truck. Now that you're at the truck, you see a couple of guards off to the side there. We're going to go underneath the truck. Once we're underneath the truck, people will decide, hey, why not grab onto the other carriage to get a free stealth transport into the center of the city? The driver's gotten in. He has no idea you're underneath there. As you notice, some cool new effects. The dust being picked up by the tires. 
to your right, just made the end to the center of the city. And remember, the center of the city has the tower that you need to get up in. The center of the city is also going to be a very hostile environment. So you got a few seconds here to figure out what you're going to do once you get there. Now, the truck comes to a stop. You want to figure out what you're going to do. The driver's gotten out. You roll out the opposite direction. As you can hear, there's a copper, a chopper coming in. Now this helicopter is kicking up a lot of dust. We call that a particle particle effect. Now you can actually use this to your advantage. In this game, you can use the particle effect as a stealth opportunity to get by this, this uh, helicopter. Now, right on the other side of this helicopter is the tower that we need to get to. Looks like there's some guys leaving the helicopter, there's some soldiers. We have to figure out what we're going to do, how we're going to deal with this. Ah, the grenade. Maybe we'll take the grenade out and from our arsenal. Drop the grenade in the tank. Drop that grenade in the tank, get out of there. Once you get out of the way, that, that grenade, off of the distance, bam, it goes off. So that tank's been exploded, that creates a diversion. Use that diversion to your advantage, make your way over to the tower. As you make your way to the tower, there's the tower, you got to scale this fence. We want to scale the fence, whoa! That fence is wired, it's an electric fence. We got to cut the juice to that. Let's find that, there's some wires right there, let's cut those wires so we can de-electrify that fence, we got to get through it. So Sam here's got his knife, he's cutting through the wires, the juice has been cut, now we can get through that fence. Now remember, we got to be cognizant though, there's soldiers all around us, there's a civil war happening, so make sure the coast is clear before we go. Looks good. So we're making our way through, we can scale this fence or we can just cut right through. So we're going to cut through the fence. But it's no easy task now that we cut through that. Let's put this out double agent. We're not going to make anything easy. As you see, there's a couple of circular discs. Those are landmines. Avoid the landmines. We shot one out. That's one way to avoid it. Nice. So now we got a ladder right there. We're going to take this ladder. This ladder is going to get us up to that tier. This is where we needed to go. This was our mission. We got to get to the rifle that's located on this tier here. Once we're there, we'll have the decision to make. We're either going to take out that rival leader of a terrorist organization who's also a U.S. double agent, or we're going to let him live. That decision is going to have consequences on the game. Whatever you choose to do, the game is going to branch off into that storyline. So again, you'll have that decision to make. Every mission in this game has a decision like that that you're going to make that's going to affect the outcome of the, of the game that's going to affect the ending. So again, there he is. He's in your scope. When this game comes out in September, you as the player are going to make that decision, what you're going to do. We're going to end it right there. Again, this game is available on all systems. Uh, this is being played right now on Xbox 360, but it'll be available in September on all systems. Again.
obviously we're not showing multiplayer, but it's, yeah. it's up and running. It's, oh, it is up and running. It's almost finished. Yeah, it's uh, Xbox 360. We have spies versus uh, mercenaries or right. what we call Upsilon. Okay. And uh, it's really fun. It's, uh, the multiplayer is completely redesigned. Oh, it has. Yeah. We're not we're not saying much more than that right yet, but uh, next month we're gonna focus more on multiplayer aspects. Okay. Start we'll releasing so. more stuff. But it's gonna be cool. So we're just gonna pick up where where you left off. That's the 360 for you. <laughs> Two frozen times in a row. Sam Fisher can't get out of the 360. <laughs> you're going to come in by plane and you're going to parachute into uh, the area. Now, one of the things that you'll be able to see is this, this is a new feature of this game. You will be able to, as you're uh, jumping out of the plane, you'll be able to control the jump. Oh, a, uh, a directed mission. So, right here, as you'll see, you get the graphics up cool, you'll see the wind blowing against, uh, against his chest and everything like that. Now, what you'll be able to do with your joystick, as he jumps, you'll be able to determine how he flips, you can do spins, you can do all this cool stuff. You can play with the camera angle as you're dropping. So again, this is Sam Fisher. This is different from Chaos Theory, this is the update. Sam Fisher is no longer masked anymore. As you can see, he's doing missions now in broad daylight. So again, you're dropping, you can throw this camera angle, you can do flips, you can do jumps. You have all these all these options right now as you're dropping in. Now, now the remember, not you are still here, so you do want to take a look at your uh, monitor, your uh, altitude here. Now, as you see the parachute icon comes up, you're going to want to pull the parachute. Now you pull the parachute, the parachute didn't open. So the parachute did not open. Now you've got to find the auxiliary chute. You don't have a lot of time, you're dropping fast. To find the auxiliary chute, use your left hand and the joystick, find the vibration point, and try to pull it. If you do not do that, you will smoke the splats right on the glacier. Our man found it, he's very good at it. So, he pulled it, he got the auxiliary chute, saves the jump. Now again, that could be the end of the game right there if you don't find that auxiliary chute. So, now, after that jump, now the mission starts. Now you're going to land on the glacier. Now that you're here, you've got a couple of guards in the area. So, now again, he's out in the open, it's in broad daylight, there's not a lot of cover here, so you've got to be careful. You've got options here, you've got thermal vision, you've got all that kind of thing, probably don't need it. Now, there's the thermal vision. Now, as you're coming along here, using as much as you can, any shading that you can find, anything you can make some stuff. As you're going along here, you find out there's a couple of guards right over the corner. You've got a couple of options, you can shoot them, or you can try and sneak up behind them and give them the knife. Now, as I said, you've got to be careful here. You don't have a lot of coverage, and you've got two guards right there. So, as you're moving along, you can, uh, good, he's got, his, so he's got his rifle sights right there. There's one of the guards. You've got them right next to each other. So, if you're going to do a shot, make sure it's clean, because as soon as you shoot one, you know your position. So, again, he's using whatever he can to get out of this. You know, he's got to get to an oil tanker eventually, but he's got to get across this glacier first in those guards, armed guards right here. So, he's got to take him out. Now, one of the new features that comes along with this game is that Sam, Sam uh, Fisher can now Oh, my swim. God. Not only by air, not only by land, but now he can do it underwater. So, as you can see, <coughs> he's underwater, and he can find pretty much what he's got to do is to find his area to uh, get underneath an ice sheet. So, as you see here, it's very cool. He can swim. 
So this is another new addition. That looks great. He's swimming along here. He's got to try and get to a point in the glade. Now we have another feature coming up here. This is translucent ice. Translucent ice means you can see through the ice. What he can see through the ice is where the guard is located. There's a guard standing on this ice sheet. Oh, suit. that's nice. Now, one of the cool things, as you can see, you can see through the ice right there. You see, see the oh image of the God. guard up above. So, this is a great way to be stealth. It's underneath the ice sheet. Now, you see the guard. One of the options he can do, he can bang on the ice, get the guard's attention, and lure him over. Right there, he just banged on the ice. The guard hears a suspicious sound. The guard will come over and check it out. You want to get the guard again, lure him over. The guard is making his way over to find out what the noise is. Now what he can do, he can give him the old claw. So the guard is now directly overhead. He's got the option. He can break through the ice and he can pull him down. Oh and my God. Right there the guard right there. So he's able to do it from underneath the ice. Another cool new feature. Again, underwater now in this one. Especially with the double agent. So good, that, that was another feature of that mission. The next mission, the last mission we're gonna show here is uh, he's now been directed to go to Africa in a country that's having a civil war. Now, he cares nothing about this civil war, it just happens to be the backdrop oh, of the nice. mission he's got to go on. So, while this is happening, his mission here is to take out the leader of another, another rival terrorist organization. It happens to be, here's the kicker, the, 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 the leader of that terrorist organization is also a double agent from the United States. So, if he takes him out, you see, you have a decision to make. You decide with the U.S., let him live, or you decide with the terrorist organization to take him out. So he's got two conflicting missions here, and that's where you as the player have to make your decision. Whatever decision you make will determine the outcome of the game. Really sorry. <laughs>
Je sais, vous ne me voyez pas et pourtant je suis là, caché dans l'image, parce que je suis le roi de l'infiltration. J'ai réussi à me planquer dans le décor de Splinter Cell Double Agent, ce nouvel épisode qui une fois de plus fait la part belle à l'infiltration. Allez, je retourne me cacher, regardez les images pendant ce temps-là. Seulement 4 ans après sa première apparition sur console, le quatrième épisode des aventures de Sam Fisher s'achemine tout doucement vers une sortie en septembre. Au programme, une mission d'agent double, d'où le titre, qui risque d'ébranler les habitués de la série. La jouabilité est en effet quelque peu modifiée par cet élément, Sam devant faire des choix qui influeront sur le déroulement de l'aventure. This is Roulette from the Frag Dolls at E3, and I'm standing here with Julian, who is, tell us exactly what you do. Uh, I'm Julian Garrity, I'm the producer on the X360 version of Splint Cell uh, Double Agent. So you live in Shanghai? I live in Shanghai. How is living in Shanghai? It's awesome. Is it? It's the hottest city in the world. Do you speak Chinese? Yes. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it in Chinese, I decided not to at the last moment. You should have. Dwei? Okay, see? Right. Proof enough for me. Oh, Sam? has lost his daughter. This is a tragic accident. It's not some evil scientist or evil corporation that's got rid of her. It's one of those random events. But that event has made him question his job, his life. So he asked the NSA, he asked Lambert, okay, can you send me on the uh, di most difficult job that you have? The most difficult job he has is an undercover mission, a mission where he becomes a double agent by infiltrating a terrorist cell and taking them down from the inside. Double Agent was the basis for all our level design, game design, context, uh, storyline decisions. So when we were thinking about it, we, we had a lot of references, TV references, movie references, whatever. And moral dilemmas are huge in spy fiction. So we knew we had to integrate it somehow. So what we've done is we've developed various moments in the game where you're going to have to take a very difficult choice. For example, would you kill an innocent person if it meant that you could save the 3,000 down the line? Would you kill your best friend to save those same people? It's a, Depends it's a on if they one. ate my ice cream or not. It's a tough one, but these decisions will have consequences in the game. You have branching storylines and multiple endings. So you see Sam in some unusual situations. First of all, he's not wearing his normal wet spy jumpsuit. So he's wearing some other cool stuff, which is nice, including shades. I've seen the shades. Those are hot. They're like Brad like Pitt shades. <laughs> Awesome. Have so, you seen the move? No. Them up? No, I haven't oh, seen that. That's awesome. But I'm glad that you guys kept some sort of like homage to the to the uh, the goggles. Of course. That's of course. excellent. The, the the goggles are in the game. It's uh, But what we wanted to do is, we had loads of ideas on the other games that we never managed to put in. So what we wanted to do was make this first next-gen game 
a really varied experience. So not only do you have different situations, daylight stealth, things that Sam Fish has never done before, but also new gameplay like skydiving, like swimming, things that are really, really exciting and completely coherent with the double agent, secret agent theme. Our main reference was a Hong Kong movie called uh, Infernal Affairs, which is all about a uh, two cops who graduate from police academy, and one of them gets recruited as a double agent within the mafia, and the other gets recruited as a double agent by the triads in the police. And it's over seven years, and they're crisscrossing stories. It's absolutely unbelievable. 24 alias. James Bond, Jason Bourne, they're all references. It's all good stuff. Yeah, they're all good stuff. So there's romance in this as well. There is romance in this. Uh, there's a woman who's called Enrica Villablanca, who's part of the terrorist group. Uh, she's an eco-terrorist, so you kind of understand her motivations. You may not agree with her methods. And let's just say that Sam might get it on. So of all the new settings that he's in, what do you think is your favorite? One of the ones that I really love and that has taken the most time to develop is uh, Kinshasa, which is a uh, city in, America, in Africa that's being torn apart by a civil war. So you have military police versus uh, rebels going, fighting each other in the middle of this, uh, this huge, huge zone. And Sam Fisher doesn't have any part of all of that, but he's got to use stealth to get through that war zone to get to his objective. It's something that we've never attempted before. Interesting, so it's a totally different kind of stealth. Completely different kind of stealth. He's got some new moves, he's got a new corner grab where he grabs the guy, puts him on the floor and then breaks his windpipe with a chop. Wow. He can uh, swim under ice, grab people under the ice and stab them in the heart. Well, you know, it's for the kids. The game's going to last about 15 hours. You'll see maybe eight, nine different environments, uh, Shanghai, Kinshasa, uh, Okosk, Iceland, New Orleans, New York, so many, many different places. So are we going to have the same kind of percentage um, calculation at the very end to see how many people you had to kill, how many, or is it going to be completely different because of the setting? The stats will be in there. We haven't decided exactly how to communicate them to the player. Okay, for the next generation game, we have Spy vs. Merc revisited, revamped. It's reimagined, it's a whole new experience. What's different about it? Well. We noticed when we were designing Double Agent that a lot of people on Chaos Theory and on Pandora were connecting once and then logging off because they were having their asses kicked probably by the Friar Dolls. There's some people that are very good in the community as well, I'll give them the credit. I know them, they're my friends, they're really, really good and they kick my butt all the time. So these guys, they're our most vocal fans, we don't want to disappoint them, but we want to give other people a shot at the game. We really think it's a great game, we're kind of disappointed that it only appeals to this hardcore group of fans. Yeah. So what we did was we developed this uh, first hour concept where newbies will be held by the hand through all the moves, the environments, they'll, they'll learn everything that there is to learn and then it'll be purely about skills, not about learning the areas. So that's one of the features, there are many many more and we'll discuss those later on. Current Gen has co-op and Spy vs. Spy. Now, Spy vs. Spy is something that I think people were looking forward to. It's much faster, much more aggressive. It's uh, it's really, really cool. The objectives are more or less the same as before. It's hacking objectives, uh, reaching objectives, stealing sometimes, things that we haven't done before. Uh, but basically, it's, it's a much, much faster, more accessible experience. When we were thinking about the, uh, the next game and the multiplayer, what we were thinking about is keeping that core stealth, sweaty palms, you know, hiding in the dark, seeing that flashlight yeah. pan across. That was the core of the experience. So the three versus three allows us to do so much more in terms of one person being a spy, having to crack those objectives, and four, five mercenaries in the actual gameplay area. You have one really good FPS player right. defend four or five objectives with three, four, five spies after them, he's in for a good time. The maps are bigger because you have to accommodate uh, a large
larger teams. But at the same time, they're very logic and you understand them very, very clearly immediately. So you never get lost, you never have problems understanding things, and the spies have incredible moves now. Because we've thought not only in terms of a vertical level, but also on a horizontal and vertical level. So things that we've not really done before. Excellent. Well, I can't wait to play it. Thank you very much, Julian, for talking to us. This is Roulette from the Fragdolls at E3 talking about Splinter Cell Double Agent. We just heard some cool stuff. Check it out.